firstly, can I ask you to introduce yourself and explain your role at the Vicor Pharma? Hello, my name is Dr. Rohit Batter and I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Vicor Pharma and I'm responsible for activities such as assuring the overall patient well-being within our Vicor clinical program. How would you describe fibrotic lung disease? So fibrotic lung disease or pulmonary fibrosis is a term that encompasses different disorders but essentially the lung tissue becomes thickened, stiff and scarred and then because of this, the body struggles to take in and, I suppose, more importantly, absorb oxygen and then patients subsequently feel shortness of breath. In conditions such as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is a type of pulmonary fibrosis, patients also have symptoms of a persistent, dry, severe cough. And then, in terms of other symptoms, they could range from weight loss, aching muscles and joints, tiredness, and also rounding of the fingertips, which physicians call clubbing. Tell us more about idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis specifically. Mm. So idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is the most common type of pulmonary fibrosis, and it's a severe, devastating condition with poor prognosis. Symptoms of shortness of breath and cough, so it's a severe, persistent dry cough, can occur between the ages of 50 to 70. And it's more common in men, although the incidence of the number of cases that are occurring every year is actually starting to increase within women as well. Now the disease itself can also cause high blood pressure within the blood vessels of the lungs. And it's not really sure how frequent this, this occurs, but there is a test called a right heart catheterization, which is the gold standard for testing this blood pressure and in studies it has been found that about 26 to even up to 46 percent of patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis have this high blood pressure in the lungs called pulmonary hypertension. How common is IPF? So let's take Europe as an example. There's around about 100,000 patients living with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis today approximately in Europe and then in terms of new cases approximately 30 to 40,000 every year. And US is pretty similar as well. So overall, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is in some ways a common rare disorder. Could you help describe some aspect of the patient journey for IPF? So the patient journey can vary geographically, but overall patients have a tortuous path to diagnosis. And that's because the symptoms of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis can resemble some common respiratory conditions such as COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. There was a recent uh, survey done in the UK and they found that approximately one third of patients were misdiagnosed and about 46% of patients hadn't received a diagnosis by even from the presentation of symptoms all the way up to six months. And if patients don't present to a specialist centre, then the delay and the misdiagnosis occurrence could potentially even increase further. And then in terms of the presentation and the diagnosis can be quite devastating for a patient given the disturbance in quality of life and also the prognosis as well. And from a treatment options perspective, there are few licensed treatment options available. And then around 80% of patients won't be uh, applicable for a lung transplantation. And I think in the UK, even around 1% of patients had a lung transplant. So palliative care is an another important aspect of the management of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. But in many parts of the world, it's offered infrequently and quite late in the process. And also, groups have found that an active self-management and a positive outlook is key to the management as well. What is the prognosis for a patient with IPF? So damage caused by the fibrosis is unlikely to be repaired and patients have few therapeutic licensed options. The quality of life is significantly decreased, particularly as the disease progresses. And the life expectancy is around three to five years. Now, if let's say we try and put that into context, so the overall five-year survival of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is worse than many cancers such as bladder, breast and bowel cancer. 
And because of the disease and the manifestations of it, patients have quite an uncertain future. One aspect of the management is that there are patient groups locally available in many countries that can help with supporting families and patients, for example, by providing education. How does Vicor Pharma see the outlook for patients patients with the IPF changing in the future? So clearly new treatment options are needed due to the significant unmet need of the disease. And from a patient perspective, it's important for us to listen to these stories and understand the manifestations of the disease so we can drive those patient insights into our clinical program and shape it so that we meet the needs of patients. And it's reassuring to hear that there's a lot of research taking place in pulmonary fibrosis to try and understand the genetics of the disease and unravel some of the challenges around the, the fibrosis, for example. And although the Vicor Pharma program is experimental currently, we remain positive that understanding the disease will help develop personalized treatments for patients.